Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Audrey Wells. I'm a board certified sleep medicine physician. You may be aware that your sleep changes with your menstrual cycle, but I think it's important to know how it changes so you can best care for yourself. Because what good care looks like one week may be different the next week. Most women notice changes in their sleep related to their menstrual cycle. And sleep is typically best the first couple of weeks after your period. This is known as the follicular phase when estrogen and progesterone are rising in your body. During these two weeks, your sleep is more predictable and tends to be better quality. Now weeks three and four are called the luteal phase. This is the time when you can start to have some sleep trouble, especially in the days prior to starting your period and during your period. Progesterone and estrogen are falling. This is a hormonal change that makes it harder to get to sleep, it makes sleep restless, and it can make it harder for you to stay asleep. In short, you experience insomnia symptoms, and this often means you don't feel 100% during the day. You've got sleepiness and fatigue. Interestingly, some research studies have shown that women may have less REM sleep or dream sleep during their period, and this is significant because REM sleep helps with emotional regulation. And emotional regulation, or the absence of emotional regulation, is a feature of premenstrual syndrome, or PMS. In addition, emotional dysregulation can further contribute to insomnia. Now, for some women who have particularly heavy flow, there may be concern or even anxiety that leakage is going to occur during the night. And so, of course, this interferes with sleep as well. Premenstrual syndrome, or PMS, affects at least 1 in 10 women. There's also a more severe form called premenstrual dysphoria disorder, or PMDD, that occurs in about 1 to 5 in 100 women. If you have PMS or PMDD, there's a constellation of symptoms that occur around and during your menstrual cycles. These symptoms include headaches, cramping, bloating, fatigue, appetite changes, reduced concentration in memory, and a tendency to have negative emotions, including anxiety and mood swings. You can imagine how sleep troubles and sleep deprivation are going to layer on top of these symptoms and even amplify them. Now, what if you don't have regular menstrual cycles? Well, in my experience, sleep quality tends to be worse overall. A couple of examples of this are women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS, or premature ovarian insufficiency. Both of these conditions can be the cause of infertility for women. Unpredictability and infertility are sources of stress, and this can definitely affect sleep quality. Now, another question I get commonly is, do hormonal contraceptives improve PMS or PMDD symptoms? There are conflicting results here. Some women benefit, but some actually have no effect with hormonal contraceptives. But even if contraceptives only make things more predictable with your sleep, this can be considered a significant improvement. However, it may take some trial and error to get the best medication and the best dose for you. My advice is that if you use hormonal contraceptives like the pill or the patch, be very consistent with the medication as prescribed, right down to the timing of taking the pill every day. What else can you do to improve your sleep when you're about to start your period? First off, recognize that you may need more rest and self-care, especially if PMS or PMDD are issues that you deal with. Listen, most women would benefit from more rest and self-care anyway, so take advantage of this time. Set a regular wake-up time in the morning and try to get bright light exposure very soon after getting out of bed. Keep up your exercise routine, even if it's just walking or gentle yoga or stretching. Throughout the day, stay hydrated and eat food that's nutritious and healthy for your body. Be mindful of how much caffeine and alcohol you're taking in, especially if they seem to be propping you up as a coping mechanism for sleep deprivation or insomnia. Then at nighttime, a warm bath or shower can help your body temperature be more compatible with sleep. Use a heating pad if you feel cramping. And go ahead and treat the pain from cramping or from headaches with over-the-counter medications that work for you. Finally, if these measures aren't helping you feel significantly better, 
then it's time to collect information that you're going to take to your personal doctor. What you want to do is track your symptoms, your sleep, and your periods for about three months to tease out what exactly is problematic. Then you bring this information to your physician to see what else needs to be done. We have more information on women's sleep and sleep health over at sleepfoundation.org. Thank you so much for watching.